stage, Rami Ismail from Vlambeer. Hi, um, my name is Rami Ismail. As uh, Andy just explained, I'm a game developer. I'm also a creator of tools for independent developers. And beyond that, I'm also a, a traveler. Um, I like travel, but I like travel mostly because it helps me figure out ways to help developers around the world. Uh, one of the things I'm really passionate about is that this medium of ours, this world of ours, is connected in unbelievable ways and that somebody that is in South Africa can make a game, somebody that is in Uruguay can make a game, somebody that is in China can make a game. As long as you've got a computer and basic internet access, you can make video games. I cherish that. I think that is very, very important. But here in the West, there are some things that upset me. And I want to talk about those things. So this is step zero. I want to show you something that annoys me. But it's going to take some explanation. To be exact, I have to teach you something new. To be more precise, I'm going to have to teach you Arabic. So sit back. <laughs> Let's do this. So step one. This combination of letters means alif, lam, mim. Alif, lam, mim. Uh, they happen in the Quran. They're actually some of the first characters in the Quran. Nobody knows what they mean. Nobody knows what they're supposed to mean either. They're used frequently in the Quran, but that's about all we know. These are the glyphs again, but with the, cor with the correct letter under the correct Arabic glyph. So let's start by teaching you a letter. Oh. This is the letter B, B. It's the second letter of the alphabet, just like in English. And it's pronounced like a shorter version of the English letter B. Okay, so that's B. Okay? So on this slide, I showed you A, L, M. So what does this say in English letters? Just B. B? That's, that's correct. Uh, if you guessed A, B, you got the letters right, but um, those are the letters A and B. The problem is that Arabic isn't read from left to right, correct? It's read from right to left. Um, so the correct response is B, A. Now, as you see on the slides here, I've put B, A in Arabic from right to left, but I've put the English from left to right. Uh, that might be a little bit confusing, but that's the way it's going to be for this presentation because there's literally no other way of doing it. <laughs> so the answers will seem the opposite way of the Arabic. Okay. So the other thing you need to know is that Arabic is a cursive script. That means that our letters are connected. Um, there are some exceptions to that, which I'll mention later, and they're not really relevant. But for now, let's agree that the top, the top glyphs say B, A, and the bottom ones say B. OK? So yeah? Got that? OK, good. Let's say, let's say this. Baba. Ba. Hey. Hey. Ball, correct. Uh, notice that the Aleph, the second letter, is actually not connected to the L. That's one of those exceptions I was talking about, right? Um, but not really relevant again. OK, let's try introducing a new letter. This is the T. T, OK? Um, not that hard. Let's try, let's try this English name. Bat, yeah. We don't really have a letter for P, so this is Bat, just as much as it is Bat, right? Not all things translate across language barriers. OK, let's try this. <laughs> all right, let's, here's a hint. Tab. T A B. OK, not a letter. This is the th. OK, so it looks exactly like the previous one, just an extra dot. OK, it's the, it's the fourth letter. Um, so so what, was, what was this word? Bat. Yeah, so what is this? Bath. Bath, perfect. New letter? This is the N, it's the noon. Uh, it looks a lot like the B, but the dot is on the other side, right? So for the B, it's underneath. For the noon, it's going to be overhead. Uh, let's try this. An. Everybody see An? Yeah, A N. OK, let's try a really hard one.
Who said that? Na Nathan? Nathan is correct. N N A T A N. Did everybody get that? Okay. So we're going to start at the start. It's a little squiggly thing with the dot above. That's an N. Then the line up is an A. Then the third letter, the th, right? Not t, but th, because it has three dots above. Then we got another A. Then we got the squiggly thing with the dot above again, which is an N. Okay? Nathan. Or Nathan. That was a rough one, I'll admit. Uh, so the, let's introduce a rough character, just for fun. This is the wow. The wow actually does not have one correct pronunciation. It has three correct pronunciations, just because, to make things easy. It can be pronounced as a W, it can be pronounced as a U, and it can be pronounced as a O. So it's a pretty versatile character. We like it a lot. So let's try this. Remember, dot below is a B, dot above is an N. Bon. Bop. NATO. NATO. N A D O. Perfect. If you know chemistry, this one is easy. <laughs> what? <laughs> Somebody said butane? Butane. Perfect. <laughs> All right. We're good? Let's try this. <laughs> this is the fi, the letter F, OK? It's a pretty simple letter. It only has one pronunciation, F. So what's this? Fan, perfect. Fauna, F-O-N-A. Try this one. Photo, perfect. You're all getting there. This is good. This is good. This is exciting. <laughs> hey, let's try a new character again. <laughs> hey, this is the Del. It's pronounced D, OK? So let's try this book. Hi, <laughs> right, that was, that was OK. Should have known that would have been an easy one. All right. So this is the Re. It's pronounced as the R. It's pronounced, it's, it looks very similar to the Del, the previous letter, but you'll know that the Del was flat at the bottom, and the Re actually extends under the baseline. OK? So let's try this. Door. Door. OK? No? Draft. Draft. Perfect. D R A F T. OK? Let's try this. <laughs> Dude, bro, perfect, yes. OK, let's move on. This is a new character. This is the meme. Now, the meme is kind of, kind of strange. We saw it back at the start of the presentation, Aleph Lam meme, A-L-M. Uh, so this is the M. But there's something special about this character, and it actually applies to a lot of characters in Arabic, which is it looks different depending on where in the word it is. So all of these are the letter M. All the way on the left there, you've got the M if it's just separate. Then you've got the M if it's at the start of a word, the M if it's in the middle of a word, and the M if it's at the end of a word. Okay? So some Arabic characters actually vary wildly in shape, depending on where they are in the word. For this character, it's not that bad, <laughs> but you still got to remember two separate shapes. Okay? Now, um, Let's try this one. <laughs> Madame. No? No? No, I didn't. No, just because I put the M in the slide doesn't mean it's the first letter in the word. <laughs> Drama. Drama. Perfect. Slightly hard, that one. Film, F-L-M. Remember, if it was an Aleph, if it was F-A-M, the second letter actually would not connect to the third letter because the Aleph cannot connect forward, right? Film. Mom. Correct. 
Again, meme at the start, meme at the end, but they look different. Same letter. Let's do a few more letters. <laughs> this is the cough. It's pronounced k. This is the calf. It's also pronounced k. <laughs> I don't really know why we have both, but some, some Arabic like accents use the cough a lot, and some don't. Uh, sometimes we have double letters. I don't know. Um, let's try this word, then. Click. This is blank. This is sort of cheating. If you put the lamb and the elf next to each other, they actually combine into a single character called the lamb elf. That's pronounced la. I don't know. I don't try to explain language. Language is just the way it is, right? Like, I'm not going to try and figure that one out. OK. This one is the hardest one in the entire presentation. Congrats. This is the ye. Uh, it can be pronounced as y, as i, or as a. And it has different shapes depending on where it is in the word. It's great. Let's try this European city. Madrid. Perfect. M-A-D-R-A-D. -A -A Madrid. This one? That's my name. Rami. That's me. OK, so let's take a quick break. This is the entire Arabic alphabet, and the green letters are the letters you've learned. It's not bad, right? Like, didn't take too long. We've been going at it for what, 12 minutes, not even 12 minutes. And you know about half of the alphabet. Well done. Like, congrats. Step two. So even though I've taught you characters, you haven't actually read a single Arabic word, right? They were all English words just written in Arabic glyphs. So in this part of the presentation, I'll give you an Arabic word and the English translation. And your, transla and your challenge is just going to be to read the word to me, OK? So let's try that. What is this word? Bab. Bab is door. Let's try this. Ummi. Ammi. Yeah. It means my mother. OK? Now, in Arabic, we do this funny thing where if you change possession, basically the final letter of a word changes. So if you change the final letter here, you get a different word. How would you pronounce this? Ammak, which is your mother. Now try this one. Sorry? Kalam. Yes. Kalam or Kalam. Uh, in Egyptian, I'm half Egyptian. In Egyptian, it would be Alam because we don't really like that first letter. We don't like to have double K, so we just you know, kind of drop it most of the time. Uh, so I, it would be Alam. There's an enormous variety of dialects and accents in Arabic. But, OK, how about this, uh, this word? Oh, <laughs> well, bit, this word for house. OK, let's try this one then. <coughs> Who said that? What did you say? <laughs> Funduk. Yes, Funduk is correct. Funduk is hotel. It means hotel in Arabic. It's a word you'll come across if you go to the Arabic world, uh, probably. So step three. Let's see an image from a popular video game. And I want you to tell me what it says in Arabic. It's up there at the top. What does the building say? Let me, let me take it out of the image, because it's kind of unclear. OK, let me connect the letters. Kadunf. Kadunf doesn't really mean anything. <laughs> like, did you just put a piece of gibberish on like a big set piece in a video game? Is that really what happened? Let me um, let me try let me try putting the letters pulling the letters apart again for you. Q D N F. Does anybody see the problem here? Can you read that for me? Uh, 
100 million dollars is reportedly the budget for this video game. 100 million. And they could not spare the, what, 100 dollars it would have gone to pick somebody random from the street to check if the big fucking sign on their hotel was right? hundred million dollars. This is a game in which a giant part of the budget went into making sure that you can shoot my people in hyper-realistic fashion and that they fall over nice and that the explosions look nice. Kadunf. One hundred million dollar and they didn't even check. It took me what? 30 minutes? 30 minutes to make you figure out why this was wrong. This isn't just a translation error. This is a gross disrespect towards an entire culture, toward, towards an entire people that speaks a language. A hundred million dollars, and nobody spent a dollar on making sure Kadunf wasn't on the building. And this, this game isn't a lone example. Pretty much every single large video game nowadays gets it wrong. Watch the previous E3, one of the largest trade shows in the games industry. Wrong. Every single time I saw Arabic. Either the words were from left to right, the characters were from left to right, or the words just didn't actually mean anything. Sometimes they wanted to write children's toy factory, or they would write children's factory. <laughs> and that can happen. This is 2015, that can happen. They get the cur cursive script wrong, they get the voice acting wrong, they get the wrong language. You know, they don't actually speak Arabic in all parts of the Middle East. Some places they actually don't. So many... So many things get this wrong. And it's actually not just video games. Part of the problem, that's not Arabic either. It's not even close to Arabic. In fact, it's so, it's so widespread that a friend of mine has a blog, nopenotarabic.tumblr.com, <laughs> where we list these. And you know what the problem is? The problem is, A, people are lazy. They don't check. They don't care. They don't care about pe people that aren't here. They don't care about people in the Arabic world. The other part is, computers are really bad at Arabic. In fact. That's probably not the fault of the person who made this. That's the fault of Unicode, of the way text is implemented. In fact, when I started and loaded this presentation, I had to do something that probably nobody ever has to do when they start a presentation, which is make sure that the Arabic is correct. When I copy-paste between Word and PowerPoint, you know what happens? The Arabic breaks. Every single connection between every letter breaks. And I have to manually add it back in. It doesn't happen always, so it means that I get to do a nice little, fun little checkout. You know, just like when copy-pasting, it's like, oh, did, did I actually copy-paste text or is it just gibberish now? And this is a thing that's very easy to solve, right? I'm not talking about something that will require billions and billions. I'm talking about something that would just require you to send an email to somebody who speaks Arabic. Something that just like five minutes of your time for a culture you don't understand. And a culture that at this point, the only way we're interacting with them is letting them know, hey, we don't even take you serious enough to write the word hotel on your buildings. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> Thank you.